gentlemen, Christine with Young PR Pros here, and I'm sitting or standing here with Terry Fallis. Thanks for standing with me. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. So today you talked about the art of storytelling. Um, how important is it for storytelling in public relations? Well, I think it's it's incredibly important because it's really what helps connect with the audience. If we aren't telling stories of some kind with some kind of a narrative arc, uh, it's tough for people to get engaged. So it's, storytelling is one of the oldest activities we have in human history. Uh, long before we had language and writing, we had storytelling back to the, the cave paintings. So that principle has some longevity behind it. So the idea of public relations people telling stories that's crucial. I think it's the best way to get your message across, to entrench a, entrench a message and maximize the penetration and retention of that message. So when you're about to sit down, because as we all know, Terry Fallis is a, um, a Canadian author, best-selling author as well. When you're about to sit down and write something, be it a press release, an annual report, or even your novel, what are some of the steps that you do? Well, the writing is actually the last thing that I do. I am very much an outliner, very much a planner. I have, it's my engineering background. I like to engineer whatever I'm writing, whether it's a news release, a communications plan, a speech, or my novel. So I map out the whole story. I know what's going to happen when, when to foreshadow it, when to resolve it, how to lay it out, how to structure it. And when all of that work is done, then and only then do I start writing. When I do it that way, the writing is quite efficient. It just goes, because I know exactly where I'm going right from the word go until I finish. So uh, I, I think that's an important part of, of writing, for me at least, is planning it before I do it. And a really good tip for young professionals heading into uh, the uh, workforce to kind of outline their writing before. Well, you think about how you wrote essays at university and at, at high school tell me that you didn't just start writing on a blank piece of paper your essay. No, you mapped it out. You knew what your thesis was. You knew the five arguments you were going to make. You knew uh, what examples you were going to cite, what quotations you were going to throw in, what footnotes were there to support it all. You did all that before you started writing. I do the same thing when I write novels, and I do the same thing when I'm writing communications materials or communications plans or speeches for clients. So one of the things that Young PR Pros is trying to answer while we're here at the CPRS 2013 conference is we still kind of feel this negative stigma that kind of hangs around uh, public relations and communications. And you actually said that in your presentation today that we need to do more PR for PR. What, can you elaborate on that and maybe give us an idea of what kind of um, PR we should be doing for PR? Well, you're right. I think there remains a stigma about the term public relations, and we hear that term used in ways that we don't like in the profession. And they say, well, that was just a PR exercise, as if that's something that's negative or, or unethical or uh, not telling the truth or something like that, which we know is wrong, but certainly that perception exists. I think the best way to get around it is just to continue to do great work that is involves storytelling, uh, honest representation, transparent, uh, lots of transparency, accountability, uh, all the things that we practice on a day-to-day -day basis. We need just to do more of that. And we also need to signal when some people undertake a public relations program that isn't quite how we would like to see it, that they hear about it and that we, uh, we don't allow them to, to practice that brand of public relations uh, here. Well, thank you so much for standing with me uh, here outside, right outside of the Canadian Av Aviation Museum on day two of the CPRS conference. And if you're interested in Terry Fallis and his books, you can actually get them for free and you can actually get, or you can buy them as well. You can do both. Um, but Terry actually podcasts his, um, his, uh, his novels as well. So you can actually catch them on iTunes. So thank you so much, Terry, for, for standing with me. Thank you, Christine.